Cannondale has given their XC race bike the scalpel a refresh for 2024. With an updated frame that sees increased suspension travel, race-ready geometry and lightweight builds, is the scalpel sharp enough to take top spot on the cross-country race bike podium? And why do they still use a fork with only one leg? I've been checking out the tech and riding it to find out. Just as the Specialized Epic enters its eighth generation, hot on its heels is its eighth generation scalpel. It's a bike that's been in Cannondale's lineup for 22 years, but rather than a complete reinvention, the brand sees this as a refining of the old bike. As we've seen from the XC world in the last few years, racing has become even gnarlier, with racetracks littered with rocks and roots, drops and jumps. To reflect this, there's been a trend of boosting travel on XC race bikes to 120mm. Cannondale has not been left behind as the new scalpel ticks all of the boxes for a modern XC race rig. But you won't see any mention of that dreaded downcountry word. That's because the scalpel SE is done and dusted. The demands of the modern XC racer are similar to that of the rider looking for a proper fast and light downcountry rig, so there's only need for one family of bikes, according to Cannondale. As I've already mentioned, the Scalper is now a 120mm travel mountain bike, but it still uses a flex day suspension layout called Flex Pivot. This flex replaces where a pivot might be on a regular suspension force linkage design, being both lighter and stiffer, as well as maintenance free. It's no wonder such arrangements are ubiquitous on XC race bikes these days. In addition to the Flex Pivot, Cannondale's also uses its proportional response kinematics, meaning that Cannondale tweaked the pivot points as position by frame size. This, the brand claims, gives the best traction, braking and pedaling performance across the size range. A twist lock remote is on the bar to lock the shock and fork, though curiously, US buyers' bikes will only get a shock lockout. The shock's lockout cable is neatly run through the top tube, keeping it out of sight. Speaking of tubes, the scalpels have been reduced in their surface area to save weight while still hitting the brand's head tube and BB shell stiffness targets. And thank heavens, down at the BB, you get a proper threaded BB shell. The rest of the frame follows plenty of best practices. There's two sets of bottle bosses on all frame sizes because short riders get just as thirsty as taller ones. There's an internal clamping mechanism to keep the internally rooted cables and hoses quiet, as well as the usual frame protections. And yes, before you ask, perhaps unsurprisingly, the cables go through the headset. However, with a 1.5 inch slimmed down upper bearing, Cannondale reckoned that the bulk of XC brake levers should fit through the bearing, reducing maintenance headaches. In terms of the bike shape, not only are the chain stays longer than before, ensuring that the geometry is balanced, but they also vary with bike size too. Additionally, Cannondale has steepened the seat angle by a degree and slackened the head angle by around one and a half degrees, making them 75.5 degrees and 66.6 .6 degrees respectively. Elsewhere, reaches have grown 10 to 15 mil for a given size, with a size large I rode measuring 475 mil. Let's look towards the front of the bike where the unique lefty fork sits. Cannondale has long fitted their single-legged, upside-down lefty forks to their bikes, but there are a number of reasons why Cannondale still forges ahead with the distinctive design. Chassis stiffness is, surprisingly given the looks, actually rather good. Its internals are also different to a regular fork, with the stanchion moving over sliding bushings and needle bearings as opposed to a fixed bushing in a regular fork. This, Cannondale claims, makes the fork smoother when you're braking down steep terrain, as there's less binding friction going on with this construction, which aids comfort and grip. Like the frame, the fork is also bumped up to 120mm of treble. How does it ride though? Stay tuned to find out. Before I do that though, a brief look at the model range. Many brands have a range topping Halo product in their lineup, and Cannondale is no different with their Lab 71 bikes. The Scalpel Lab 71 sees super high-end, high-modulus Series 0 carbon fibres being used, named MR70 and M40XC. This makes the frame lighter, and including hardware, a medium comes in at just 1,780 grams, which is a whole 20 grams lighter than the previous generation. That might not sound like much, but given that these are much larger frames thanks to the updated geometry, it's actually an impressive achievement. Lab 71 frames are around 300 grams lighter than the Series 1 carbon frames found on the other bikes in the Scalpel lineup, and give a claimed weight of around 10.4 kilos for a full bike in a size medium. Interestingly, Cannondale are running two sets of build families for the Scalpel, with a family of North American models and a rest of world family. 
Perhaps even more surprisingly, given the brand's US roots, its native customer's bikes will all come with traditional two-legged forks unless you opt for the lefty-equipped Lab 71. The rest of the world has lefty options in some models. Likewise, outside of the Lab 71, none of the North American builds will come with a fork lockout, while the rest of the world versions do. This apparently is due to market preferences. As a result, there are quite a few options. I'm not going to cover all the specs here. If you want to head over to bikeradar.com, you'll be able to find far more details. The link is in the description. The long and short of it, though, is that the range kicks off with a £3,950 or $4,000 Scalpel 4 and tops out with a £10,000 or $14,000 Lab 71. But without any further ado, let's tuck into those first ride impressions. I was lucky to ride the £8,550 or $9,500 Scalpel 1 on the launch in Portugal over a couple of rather damp days early this year. The lefty Ocho carbon fork was spec while the rear shock was a RockShox Sid Lux. As this was a non-US spec bike, both were hooked up to the twist lock remote. SRAM supplies the XO axis transmission on this bike, while wheels come from DT Swiss, a 2.4-inch Recon race at the front and a 2.4-inch Aspen at the back. Give any bike an Aspen rear tyre and a firm lockout, and unless the frame is built from noodles, it's going to climb smooth climbs with at least some level of liveliness. The scalpel is no noodle, and despite a slimmed down profile over the last version of the bike, it doesn't swing and sway under your power as you haul on the bars while climbing. The twist lock is easy to operate, and on smoother climbs, even on dirt, I was happy switching to the locked position. When you do hit chunkier climbs, switching to the open mode reveals a bike that's still no slouch. During seated pedaling, the suspension remains still, enabling efficient ascents, and when it gets loose, there's just enough free movement available to the rear wheel to help it generate more grip than you give the Aspen credit for. The steeper seat angle feels good too, while the front and rear portions of the bike feel very balanced. Overall, it's a very competent climber, as you'd expect. Moving on to the thumb bits, and with its updated geometry, the new scalpel is a more confident beast than the previous generation. The longer reach and slacker head angle give it stability at speed and through corners, while again, the front and rear balance is good. Though it's a race-focused bike, there's still the ability to pick it up and play around. The odd jump and drop doesn't seem to phase the bike. Up front, the lefty might split opinions when it comes to aesthetics, but it is a solid fork. It might only have one leg, but it's got plenty of stiffness. And though its motion through the travel feels a little different to a traditional fork, I believe due to the needle bearings, it's reactive and smooth nonetheless. I'd like to place this fork in a head-to-head -head with a SID or Fox 34 Stepcast to really delve into the relative performances. Is that something you want to see? Let me know in the comments. Overall, the new scalpel has certainly been brought up to date with a new shape, suspension feel, and modern parts package. Though I've only ridden it briefly, the scalpel feels confident and capable up and down hills. It's not quite as radical as the new specialised Epic 8 in terms of its shape, however it's only a few millimetres here and half a degree there, but this is surely the bike that the scalpel will be instantly compared to. I'm looking forward to spending more time on both of these bikes in the coming months. Make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any of our upcoming XE content, and if you want to see my thoughts on the new Epic 8, then check out this video.